Come on, join in with us this morning. The blood of Jesus still works. His blood works. Never lost his power. Yes, it works. I've been redeemed by the blood, the blood of the Lamb. His blood still works. And I'm here to testify God's not dead, he's still alive The same blood that was shed way back on Calvary Is the same blood that's working now for me right. Oh, his blood redeemed me from the stain of sin his blood cleansed me deep down within and if you ask me how i made it and how i overcome all that i will tell you it's because of the blood his blood still works i'm glad to report never lost his power and it never will i've been redeemed by the blood by the blood of the lamb now this is an old song right here oh the blood of jesus oh the blood of jesus oh i'm talking about the blood Jesus talking about the blood that Jesus shed he shed right back on Calvary for you and me and this oh, oh, oh the blood oh the blood the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary it still Yes, it works. Yes. The blood. 
Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we want to welcome. Come on, let's honor the Lord because the blood of Jesus works. Hallelujah. It's alive. Hallelujah. The blood never loses its power. Yes, what can Lord. wash away our sins? What can make us whole again? Men and women of God all over who's watching this, let's welcome our pastor, our overseer of Fresh and Learning House of Worship, Birmingham, Alabama, Pastor David L. Padway. Thank you so much for that powerful and wonderful song, and his blood still works. Amen. It Amen. works, works. It's been working right now in the name of Jesus ever since Jesus uh, was crucified, died, and buried, rose again. Yes. So yes, we Lord. thank God yes. for the blood yes. of Jesus I and all that. he's done. And even in this time of adversity, the blood of Jesus still works. Yes. Uh, today our title is Heaven's Response to Earth's Despair. Uh, we will read uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add one single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Amen. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. And your heavenly father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Let's go before the Lord. Father God, we thank you and praise you. We love you. We glorify your name. We thank you for being the wonderful, kind, mighty, glorious God that you are. We thank you right now that you're a God that will supply every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And God, in times of these great needs, we know you will show yourself big. We're thanking you right now for your, your peace, your love, your joy, yes. covering right now even this world as the world begins to know that there's only one way and you are the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, but yes. Lord, you being glorified through this word, and we thank you right now that it will be bring peace and healing to every home under the sound of my voice. In Hallelujah. Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. When we think of how and what is happening in our world today, when we think of the great pandemic that's happening, the world is full of anxiety, worry, and fear. And so we have to ask ourselves, what is the solution? What is going on to everything that's going on? So last week we talked a little bit about uh, anxiety, which is worry, and we looked at it and we said another word for anxiety is worry. And God words us, tells us to be careful for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication to make our requests be made known unto God. Amen. Well, when we start looking at worry, we, we wanted to get some statistics on worry. We found out that 40% of the things people worry about never come true. Wow. We found that 30% of our worries are related to past matters which are now beyond our control. 
we found that 12% of our worries have to do with our health, even when we are not actually ill. We found that 10% of our worries are about friends or neighbors and not based on evidence or fact. And only 8% of our worries have some basis in reality, which means that 90% of the things we worry about never happen. Do you understand how gripped we are in worry and how the enemy is facilitating that in order to cause us to not have rest or peace or any of those things? We also wanted to look at the explosion of fear. We found out that there was a website that has about 500 different fears that people had. I want to read to you some kind of interesting ones that we found out. We found out claustrophobia, and we, we know claustrophobia is the fear of confined places. Uh, then there's dentophobia, the fear of dentists. Uh, I can't say I haven't had that before when I think of the needle that sometimes they use. Uh, I ask them sometimes to not let me see that needle because it looks like a horse needle rather than a human needle, okay? <laughs> then there's pentherophobia, the fear of your mother-in-law. I didn't even know that one existed, okay? And then there's homophobia, the fear of sermons. I feel sometimes the people in my congregation have that fear uh, <laughs> when I say, give me another minute. <laughs> okay, and there's a rock, but to rophobia, the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of your mouth. <laughs> and then there's luposlipophobia, the fear of being pursued by timber wolves around a kitchen table while wearing socks on a freshly waxed floor. Uh, you know, some of it seems ridiculous, but some of us have fears, and we need to realize that fear is a phobia, and then that phobia turns into a greater phobia if we don't deal with it. Amen. Second Timothy 1 7 says that for God has not been given us a spirit of fear, yes, but yes. of power, love, and of a sound mind. Amen. Now that's for the saint of God, the one that knows God above all others. And so when we are saints of God, we have alternatives to the living with the fear of the world. We might have been in fear, but we don't have to stay in fear. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. God has Amen. given us power. So... Let's look at heaven's response to earth despair. Er, the earth, the whole earth is in despair right now. And they're in despair because they don't have a solution to what's going on. And they fear what might happen if it goes on for long. But I want to describe to you heaven's response to that earth's despair. Heaven response number one demands a new perspective of our Father which is in heaven. Right. You know, I even growing, growing up in church, I had this image of God that he had a baseball bat that was ready to knock me out any time I did anything that was wrong. Mm. I reviewed him more as a person that would beat me than would father me. But as I grew, grew in relationship, I began to realize that this God here wants to protect me, encourage me, keep yes. me. He wants to really help me to be the best I can in every area of life which he's ordained Amen. and I began to love this father for he was a father like no other father I ever had uh, I had a stepfather every day would tell me I was no good and mm. never amount to anything. Mm. But when I met this father, yes. he turned it all around. Yes. There's Amen. nothing like the father we serve. So I went looking and trying to look at some things about our father in this heaven's response and having a new perspective. Isaiah 49, 14 through 15. It says here, but Zion, Jerusalem, her people as seen in captivity said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. And the Lord answered, can a woman forget her nursing child that she would not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes, they may forget but I will not forget you. This same God who will never leave us nor forsake us Amen. says even if a mother who has a suckling child 
on her breath and she would forget him. He, he, she's saying, God is saying, I will not forget yeah. you. Yeah. God yeah. has not forgotten you. I don't care yeah. where yeah. you are. I don't care if it seems like you're all alone. God said he will never leave you nor forsake Amen. you. Amen. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Yes. I heard that. Yes, he is. I heard it so many times and I'm just beginning to realize how good God is. And yeah. then I looked at Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. He said, the thing that that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. And so a pandemic is nothing new. Okay, we've had pandemic of viruses that kill thousands of people, hundreds of thousands all around the world. So it's nothing new. It has been before. And if Jesus tarry, it will come again. Amen. Uh, so, so it says there's nothing new under the sun. But then when I read God's word according to Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, yeah. it says here, and I'm reading the amplified version in most of these. It says, do not earnestly remember the former thing. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Yes. Now it springs forth. Do not you perceive, see, or understand and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yes. So I said it's conflicting to let know that there's no new thing under the sun. And yet for God to say he's doing a new thing. For those that are his, let me tell you, God will reveal to us that what is really going on and give us victory in every circumstance. I'm not talking about in some circumstances. For the world, there's no new thing under the sun because they can't deal with what's going on. But for the children of God, it's an opportunity for victory. For us to walk in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and know that God who has and will, he'll do it again right now in Jesus' name. So the new thing is in my perception of what God can do in spite of what's going on in the earth. Amen. Do you realize that God created everything there is yes. and everything there is has his, has his permission to yeah. operate in the earth? Hallelujah. We've got to know. And so again, I was looking at the goodness of God in Isaiah 43 verses 1 and 2. It says here, he says, but now thus said the Lord that created the old Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, right. fear yes. not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. You've got to realize when we look at this here that he's saying, I created thee, O Jacob. Yes. And when he's saying that he created thee, O Jacob, you realize that every one of us is God's creation. Amen. He created us all. But when he uses the name Jacob, Jacob means trickster or supplanter. And so he's saying that every man that's born on this earth, he created. Uh, yes. If you look at John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only yes. begotten son that yes. whosoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting yes. life. Yes. You realize that God died for everyone, the sinner and the saint, every one of our his creation. But then yes, all of did. a sudden there's a twist in here. And he says, and form the O Israel. You understand that Israel means prevailer with God. Yes. And Jacob didn't become what we call Israel until he decided to wrestle with the representative of God and he yes. wrestled because he said I don't want to be Jacob anymore yes. some of us need to wrestle now that I'm not going to be the same person I was then I'm going to become a child of God and he said he formed them. we want it easy but nothing comes easy unless God begins to form you yes, and in order God. to form you he's got to yes, shape God. you into who he wants yes. you to be we're talking yes. about being shaped and formed by God. If you've allowed God to shape you, you'll start dropping off of some of those bad habits right yes, now. God. You'll start dropping some of those ungodly friends right now. Yes. You'll start, start watching some of that ungodly stuff right now. Yes, because God. if God formed you, that means he shaped your soul that the other stuff wouldn't fit. Yes, you understand God. you're shaped stuff that yes. fit. You're shaped 
the fit the living God and his anointing and his power right Hallelujah. now. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, he says here, he said, for that I called you by my name, the, the dark mind. You realize they were calling Jacob. Jacob, every time they said his name, it was tricked or supplanted and manipulated. But yes. he said, right now, I'm calling you by my name. It's yes. Israel. Everyone that's been born again, you are prevailing with God if you will allow God to form you. Yes, you are a child with God. Allow, yes, allow God. to form you. Hallelujah. He says this in verse 2. He says, when I pass it through the water, sometimes it seems there's a little bit of resistance yes. in your life and things are not going just right. Right. But God has said when you just when the water's just up to your ankle and you're waiting and see like a struggle, yes. he says, I'm gonna be with you. Yes, and the God. next time he says, and through the rivers, and through the rivers you can't wade through, you got to swim, baby. Yes. Sometimes the river will seem to be <laughs> over your head, yes. but you got to swim yes. right now. Yes. You know, even if you don't know how to swim, God said, I'm the one gonna teach you how to swim. Hallelujah. Even if you don't Hallelujah. know, I'm gonna really cause you to move move as never before. Yes, and then what, what he said, he said, he says, and thou shalt not flow, but he says, when thy walk is through the fire. Yeah. Some of us feel like we've been some fire like you've never seen before. Yeah. Some of us have been through headaches, heartache. We've yeah. been through divorce. We've been yeah. through, Lord, jail, everything else. But yes, God, God is saying, when I'm taking you through these things and you're going through these things, and a lot of time it's because I own fault or whatever. Yeah. But he says, however you're going through it, if you came through it, he says, I'm not going to let the fire burn you. Yeah. But I look at him and he Hallelujah. said, I'm not going to even let the embers Get on you and start up any fire either. My yes. God is worthy to be praised yes, right now is. because yes, of is. his goodness and his kindness. Yes, he is. But you understand, there's a hedge around the saints of God that guides us and holds us against the vicissitudes of life. Yes. And because we are in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. it's like when we think of this virus right now, I think of it as wherever I go, I'm in Christ Jesus. Yes, if the God. virus can affect Jesus, then it can affect me. Yes. So I believe that the blood of Jesus is coming yes. every one of you saints right now. Yes, and if God. I want to say that I get saved now. Hallelujah. If I run away from God, I come back now. Yes, because God. We need the hedge of the Lord Jesus yes, Christ. God. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, God. But when we talk about a new perspective right now, we have to look at it in a way that when we think of heaven's response, we have to have a new perspective and outlook. It demands a new you. Second Corinthians 5 17. It says here, therefore, if any man yeah. be in Christ, yeah. he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. Now, I want to tell you what's new. That's his song. When I, you know, I looked at my feet and they look new. Look at my hands and they did too. I think I got it mixed up. But anyway, when we think of the, we, yes. when we think of that, when you get saved, your hands and your feet don't look, don't, don't change. They really don't change. Let me tell you what changed. <laughs> Look, you understand we have a body, we, we live in a body, we have a soul, and we are a spirit, mm -hmm. but the body itself will never be changed until we rise up with Jesus and we get our glorified body. Yeah. The soul has to Amen. be transformed through word, through the word, prayer, and test and trial. Right. You say, I don't, I, they told me that when I got saved, I would no longer have test and trial. No. But man, that's a lie straight from the pit. Amen. The trial may up themselves when Hallelujah. you get saved. So Amen. watch out for that. The Amen. spirit is made new because when the spirit is made new, God is saying the Holy Ghost comes on the inside yes. of me. And when the Holy Ghost comes on the inside of me, I become the temple of the Holy Ghost yes, right now. God. I Hallelujah. become the worship center of God. Yes, I don't God. have to really be in church in order to praise God. I need to be in church because he said, fail not to assemble myself among the brethren. Yes. I need God more Hallelujah. than Yes, so that's God. what I'm not waiting till I get the church to have church. Hallelujah. I'm having church in my home. Yes, I'm having God. church in my automobile. Yes, and God. if you don't watch it, I'll have church at church at work too. Hallelujah. I have it everywhere I can right yes, now. God. I don't know how to not say 
amen. I don't amen. know how to Hallelujah. say praise the Lord. I'm yes, not God. right now the name of Jesus dealing with a lot of religion and tradition because yes, I'm moved by relationship. Yes. The Lord is my Savior. Jesus is the one Hallelujah. that died for me. So I'm giving God glory for all he is doing right now. Yes, a God. new you gives you a new sight. A supernatural sight. Yes. When you are able to see what others don't. When yes, others God. are bought in fear. You are knowing that God's word tells you that you walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, I'm God. not operating in the what we call sensory realm on its own. I'm operating right now in the heavenly realm. Yes, and God. so we got to know that God is saying that it's our time to arise, church. It's not time to be embarked in fear because fear is not supposed to have a grip on us. Fear is an opportunity right now to glorify the living God. Yes, so God. God word tells us that we were dead in trespasses and sin, and now we become really alive in Christ. Ephesians 2, 1 and 2, it tells us this. He says, and you had to quit quickened and the word quicken here means made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Oh man, we were in dead in trespasses and sin, and we couldn't get out. Glory, hallelujah, I used to promise God all the time. God, if you'll get me out of this mess, glory, hallelujah, yes, I'm going to serve you till I die. Yes, but then I got so that I thought I had a formula for God. Uh -huh. And then God started allowing it not to end so quick. And before I knew it, I knew it was my last time. In the last time, I said, Lord, I just receive however you want to do it. I've been through enough mess. I've been stuck enough. All yes, this God. mess I'm in, I yes, want God. you to be my Lord and Savior. And God became. Yes. King of my life, and I made him Lord. I just didn't make him Savior, I made him Lord. I made him God of my life, and I've been serving him for over 32 years. And I've been serving and walking upright with God. Glory, hallelujah. I haven't been perfect sometimes, I get angry, but I go to the Lord and I apologize to who it was because I want God to be glorified. Right now, it's time for God to be the Lord of our lives. Right now, yes, God, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. A change of positioning brings not only life but that more abundantly. Yes, John 10 and 10 it says, The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. He says, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I want that abundant life right now in the yes. name of Jesus. And some people say that abundant life means life means that I'm gonna have houses, cars and land. I appreciate that, but I want a relationship with Jesus Christ more than anything. Hallelujah. I want to glorify him in every area of my life. It's not about things. It's about the living God yes, coming God. into our life and changing our life. This world needs Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. The change in our position does not mean the absence of test and trial, but a change in our hope. Romans 5, 3 through 5, it reads here. Yes. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation work in patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and the hope make it not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given us. It says here, and we glory in tribulation. We don't glory for tribulation. We don't like tribulation. God didn't tell us that. But he said, we got to go through tribulation. But let me help you to understand. Some of you think tribulation is a test. Oh, man, but tribulations last longer than a test. You know when you take it in school. You know whether you pass that same day or the next day or maybe the next week. And some of you have been through trials. Well, I'm talking about court trials. And they may last three months. But when you go through tribulation, it may last years right now. And you won't know whether you're going or coming. But if you've been flat standing in the word of God you know yes, that God. God is going to bring you out. Hallelujah. You know that tribulation work in patience. What Hallelujah. is patience? It's 
not just waiting. You up there talking about patience and waiting. You wait because you have Hallelujah. to. But tribulation working patience, that kind of patience is having peace while you're waiting. Peace in the midst of the Hallelujah. storm. The peace that the disciples yes, didn't have God. when they were in the boat with Jesus. And Jesus woke up and said, peace be still. Yes, and glory. God. Hallelujah. Peace yes. be still. Yes. It took people think he was talking to the storm, but he was talking to the disciples. And we said, yes, peace God. be still. It really right now caused them to rise up in faith. And yes, their God. faith right now began to cause the storm that right now yes, ceased God. in Jesus' name. If yes, you will call peace to be still on the inside of you, all of a sudden the storms in your life will begin to disintegrate Hallelujah. because the power of God is on the inside of Hallelujah. you. The same one that Jesus used in order to stop the storm now lives on the inside of you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said right now when he's talking about the word and he said patience experience. There's nothing like having experience with God. Yes, you God. know he's going to come through. That he's the same yesterday, today, and then forever. He's the one that brought you through this far. And he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. When you got experience with God, you know that some years ago, you would have right now did a different thing than you do now. When you slam your finger in the car door and you have to open the door to pull it out. Yes. And instead of a curse word, it comes a praise the Lord. You understand that when we have experience with God, we're just believing that God is going to solve every issue there is. Yes, and it God. says, experience hope. And this hope is not regular <coughs> hope. It's not the gambling or casino hope where you try to go and see if you're going to uh, hit the right numbers. It's not that kind of hope. Because no, no. sooner or later, you're going to lose no. more than you win. Hallelujah. You're going to lose more than you win. But this hope in the end is going to make sure that you are right now going to be exemplified. You're going yes, to God. right now be the testimony. And you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your yes, testimony. Yes, it's God. the hope that says right now... All things are working together for my good. Hallelujah. It may not seem good, look good, feel good, but it's working together for my good yes, because God. of who Jesus is in me. Hallelujah. Listen here, I know I'm going through some stuff right yes, now, God. but hold on. Hold on. God is coming right yes. now. Hold on. Hold you want to see the power of God yes. in my life right yes. now. And it's time, church, for the church of God to arise right Hallelujah. now to come forth and declare yes, the works of the Lord right yes, now. God. Don't Hallelujah. run away from stuff that God has ordained you and anointed you to defeat. Yes, but we God. must obey a civil authority yes, right now. God. We've got to use common sense at the yes, same time. God. And when we do what God said, he's going to provide an opportunity. You've yes. got neighbors, you've got friends, you've got people you can call and encourage. Encourage them now that God is on the throne yes, and then God. encourage them to make Jesus their Lord and Savior right now. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, yes, and it Lord. says here, because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost was given us. Do you know what really tests and trials do? They cause us to shed. Do you know when animal, different animals are growing new skin, they have to really shed the old skin. Hallelujah. When birds are growing new feathers, they have to shed old feathers. Yes, Listen here, when we're going through tests and trials, I want you to realize the love of God is shed abroad because what happens is that we begin to shed judgmentally, self-righteousness, yes. all those things that are not of God. Because see, when we're, everything is going good with us, well, we can say, I can't understand how he or she would uh, be doing that over and over again. I can't understand why they're always getting angry. They always tell and folk off and all that. You can't understand why they always sick or always broke. You can't understand it. So you talk about it like that. You don't pray for them. You talk about them. And when you do that, 
Paul says, let me show you that you ain't that perfect. And when God shows you you aren't that perfect and you go through enough test and trial, what happens is you begin to say, I'm going to shut my mouth and pray. Because I don't want nothing else to come. Because whatever I'm sowing, that's what I'm going to reap. And us saints, the firm affection prayer of the righteous of Ellen Mud, yes, but it God. tells us to pray for one another. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So when we look at what is happening, let's look at but when we talk about the response of heaven, let's look at what's in heaven. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 3, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realm because we are united with Christ. Yeah. Now I noticed that it just didn't say in heaven. It says with all spiritual blessing in heavenly realm, which means that there must be more than one heaven, okay? Yes, so in heaven, when, that we're talking about the third heaven, uh, in heaven, the payment is gold right now. They walk on that stuff. That's nothing to them. Pearls and precious ornaments are gates, okay? Yes, sir. Sickness and disease is non-existent and there's only victory in heaven. So when we're talking about in heaven, there's all the spiritual blessings you could really name up there and we're looking at the victory we have that is in the heaven. So let's look at some of the other things that are in the third heaven. First of all, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Uh, it says Ephesians 2, 4, and 6, it says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, whether well, he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved, and has raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Yes. So, it really means that not only Christ is up there, we're seated up there, although we own this earth. We are ambassadors in this earth, but really, we, to tell the truth, people are praying for victory when we should be praying from victory. I'm already up there right now. I've already got the victory. So I'm praying right now from victory right now. That's why coronavirus is going to be defeated in the body of Christ. That's why right now we're going to walk in total victory because I'm praying from victory right now. My faith has me up. God says I'm seated in heavenly places not just when Jesus come to have us all come back to him right now and to the Father in heaven. But I'm seated in heavenly places right now with Jesus Christ. Yes, so we and Jesus are seated in the third heaven. Yes, Let's look at what, what else in the third heaven. God's angels that defeated Satan and his angels occupy heaven. Revelations 12, 7 and 9. It says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought at his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. I want you to know, a third of two thirds of the angels that didn't rebel are still in heaven with Michael, the warrior angel, the archangel, and with right now Gabriel, the messenger angel. They're in heaven right now. And so when we look at the third heaven, or the second, the, first, the third heaven, it is filled with capacity, power, and anointing. There's nothing that can defeat what's going on in the third heaven right now. Now when we look at the, the demonic forces we wrestle with are located in the second heaven. Let's look at Ephesians 6 and 12. It says here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So these are the forces that are in the second heaven that have been cast out of the third heaven, which are subject to the third heaven right now in Jesus' name. Yes. So when we look at the, the summary of the occupants in heaven, in the third heaven, there's God. There's Jesus Christ, there's the believer, there's angel, they're all spiritual blessings. But when we look at the second heaven, there are demonic forces. And the first heaven or our atmosphere is where mankind 
the atmosphere and God creations are. So when we look at all that, the heavens are really where the power is as far as what happens in the earth. There is no manifestation in the earth without there first being a battle in the heavenlies. So you understand we're fighting a spiritual war right now. Yes. So the benefits of living from heaven's perspective, perspective is how we see. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it correctly, the location of, of our victory is not here on earth, but in heavenly places right now. Yes. We just read, read some of this, but it says here, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of doctrine of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take upon you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Let me say something to you right now that you need to totally pay attention to. If we find ourselves wrestling with people, we are essentially picking fruit without addressing the root of the issue. Come on. People on this earth is not the root, it's the fruit, it's the result. But there is a root right now that has to be plucked up. But the root is that we dismantle the things that are going on in the heavenlies right now. So the enemy, like any good team, studies the tape of your of his opponent. You are his opponent. When they get ready in football or basketball, especially football, they'll sit for hours and watch tape of their opponent determine what their weakness is. And then the next time they meet, they'll attack that weakness. But what I want you to know right now in the name of Jesus, the enemy studies, and if you're always getting offended, you're always getting hurt, you're always getting shame, you're always walking in unforgiveness and bitterness and love, the enemy studies your take, and he's going to send you what offends you. And some of you have been looking at people and attacking people and trying to get itself with people but God's word says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so you, you leave one place and go to another place where you figure that that won't happen again. But the cool thing is the enemy is going to study your tape. So another person comes that's going to offend you, that's going to shame you, that's going to cause all that to happen because you haven't attacked the root. You keep trying to avoid the fruit. But what we've got to do is stand up as people of God and realize that my warfare is in the heaven is right now. And Lord, every enemy is defeated because of who God is. There's a story about some place in China where the pastors got together and really when the pandemic happen over there with coronavirus they all got together and began to proclaim that coronavirus was going to end. You notice that now it's beginning to subside in that place right now in the name of Jesus because men and women of God begin to get together and proclaim and say what God has said. And you know what we say about 5780, the Jewish New Year that we came under in September, that that 5 stands for grace, the 7 stands for perfection, the 8 stands for new beginning, and the 0 stands for infinity. But the Zero is the year of the mouth, the year we proclaim what God yes. says. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, God. And we've been saying right now that we need to say what God said. We need to speak what God speaks. Now yes. we're saying we need to proclaim it. When you proclaim something, you're often saying that no matter what the circumstances is, yes. I'm going to say it out loud yes. that God himself will take care of this virus right now in Jesus' name. Yes, but it's going to take the church arising right now. Yes, the church God. beginning to proclaim. Yes. The church that's not afraid nor ashamed. We're yes. going to have to stand up and proclaim right now the name yes. of Jesus that yes, coronavirus God. you will not touch right now the people of God right now the yes, name of God. Jesus that right now the name of yes, Jesus God. the people all over this world are beginning to turn to you because you are the only solution we yes, want our God. churches right now to be places where people come in who caught it and then all of a yes, sudden God. they come in and the right now virus dies before it can even get in the the sanctuary yes, right now in Jesus' name. Yes, We're thanking you for the power of God Hallelujah. right now. 
Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, God. The root is the old slew for devil and his demons, which have already been defeated by death, burial, and re resurrection. Let's look what God says in his word about the saints of God. Luke 10, 19. He says right now, behold, I've given you power. And this word power is to also translate authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said he's given us power. He's yes. given us authority right yes, now God. over every enemy there is. Yes. In Ephesians 1 and 3 it says, praise all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing yes, in the God. heavenly realm because we are united with Christ. Yes, God. There's a question we must ask and he blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places is be giving us all this authority we just read about then the question become if I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places if Jesus has given me authority of all the power of the enemy why do I feel like I'm losing there's people all over in the, not only in the world but in the body of Christ and they feel like they're losing right now in the name of Jesus they're losing a battle that has already been won so the key to victory is first of all putting on the whole armor of God. Yes. Ephesians 6 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The word wiles is schemes and tricks of the devil. Yes. He has devised schemes and his main scheme, I'll tell you what, is that he wants to take us from under covering. When he takes us from under covering, we have a canopy over this church. And we have a canopy, and if it's raining outside and you didn't want to get wet, the enemy could trick you like you weren't going to get wet. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you go out there and it's raining and you don't have an umbrella and you go from under the canopy, canopy you're going to get wet. Mm -hmm. But people see that as a root when it's really a fruit. Mm -hmm. You getting wet is not the really root. The root is you listening to the enemy's voice and being deceived. The, right now we have people even in the church who are deceived right now and they run from under covering. Every time something happens that they don't like, every time somebody does something they don't like, they Amen. run from under the covering of God and decide I'm going to do it my way. And Amen. God says, okay, if you want to do it your way, I'm going to let you right now in the name of Jesus. That was a song, I'll do it my way, but that doesn't work in the kingdom of God right now. We've got to stay under the covering of God. His word is true. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. God expects us to be holy before him right now. He expects us right now to love one another right now because he did it too. And so we need to stop running from under covering. And so we want to run from under covering and all all of a sudden the scripture, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, that lets us know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind do not apply because we're ignoring God now. We're yeah. saying, God, right now, I'll do it my way. And God said, go ahead. But you're running from under covering right now. We say, well, I'm offended and I'm just going to leave. But God is saying, don't you do that because I haven't told you to leave. Yeah. Don't do anything without my saying that yes, that's God. what needs to be done. Yes, and we're wrestling not against flesh and blood right now. Yes, and God. God knows we need right now strength as never before. It is Jesus' strength that we are wrestling in and not ours. It is Jesus' strength right now. Yes. Colossians 2 and 10, it says, and you are completing him with the head, which is the head of all principality and power. He says in Colossians 1 and 3, it says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We are translated out of darkness. I'm sorry if you're walking in darkness, it's because you desire. It's yeah. not because that's what God's got for you. Amen. God, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life right now. I'm the life, Lord, that comes out of whoever would decide to follow me in Jesus' name. Amen. So how you and I respond is what the world needs now. The earth has, was, has been given unto men. Yeah. See, the response of heaven is not a what, but it's a who. Amen. You understand 
that when we talk about God, you are at, you as a disciple are God's response to fear and worry in the earth. When we talk about the response or heaven's response to earth's despair, you are as a child of God. How you handle the fear, how you handle the worry in this present time is going to dictate whether heaven is responding correctly through you. I know we say, but God, but let's leave, look at Psalms 115 and 16. It says here, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth hath he given to the children of men. All right. Mm -hmm. For those of us that know Christ, he's given us authority even in the earth to decree what he decreed, to declare what he declares. And if we're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, is there fear in heaven? Is there worry in heaven? Is there sickness in heaven? Is there defeat in heaven? You can tell me, I know. There's none of that in heaven. So what does that mean? God has given us authority to manifest heaven here on earth. Not only men, but his sons and daughters by the second birth. He has given us the light of his son Jesus, and we are so to let that light shine before men. Matthew 5 and 16, it tells us, let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. If we are fearful and all those things, I want you to know we're gonna have a world that's filled with that fear too because we are the hope they see. See, we see spiritually, but the world only see what we call in the sensory realm, what they can hear, taste, see, and smell. So we have to really let that light shine. His son sent the Holy Ghost to comfort us in our greatest tread test trials and tribulations. The Holy Ghost has come to live on the inside of us, to give us power. Ladies and gentlemen, we are heaven's response. When we call on the name of Jesus, and God's word says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, for you who are saved and walking with God, I want you to, these scriptures that I've been repeating, I want you to go over them because it reestablishes who you are in Christ Jesus. The power, the authority, the anointing that rests in you that's going to be a blessing to everyone you know. I want you to pick up that phone and call someone who needs encouragement right now. Just begin, begin to think of people who just need a word from you a word of encouragement. Now, specifically, I've been asked to address some of you who have really turned away from God. And one comment I'd like you to put on, if you decide that this message has caused you to turn back to God, you're gonna seek him like you never heard Sodom before. You're going to really repent and turn back to him. And I want you to just comment on that, I return. And I'll know what it means, but and the people in the broadcast, but nobody else will know. I return. I return because God wants you back so much. You've been in twilight zone. You've been in all those places, but it's time to return to the ark of safety. And if you never, never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, this is the time. I just want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord. I believe you died for the sins of the world. I believe you died for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of every sin I've committed against you, to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life from this moment on throughout eternity. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. Listen. Heaven's response to earth's despair is 
you. Now we need to take advantage of that. God bless you and we'll see you again.